Hey everyone, welcome to Adventures in Everyday Cooking, where every day can be an adventure in your kitchen. My name is Heather, and if you have been on this channel for a while, you know that March, I tried to play my Irish card, and we tried to do Irishy things. Last year, we did the meatballs, Guinness meatballs. My husband loved them, my friends loved them, me not so much. Then, we did the cake that should have been delicious, because cake. Hello. It's chocolate cake. I didn't really care for that either. But again, husband and friends all loved it. So as March approached, I thought to myself, self, what can you do this year with Guinness that you might actually like it? Probably nothing. But here we are, because today we're gonna do Irish stew that has Guinness inside of it. I'm thinking because it's gonna mostly cook out, maybe it will be fine. That's what I'm telling myself anyway, but I, if this, I, if I don't like this, it's not the recipe's fault. It is totally my fault and my taste buds fault. And again, my Irish card is in question. However, we're gonna do it anyway. It's gonna be delicious to everyone else and me. I'm just gonna speak that into existence. It's going to be delicious. So without further ado, let's get this Irish stew started. And we're gonna do it in the Instant Pot. Oh, it's gonna be great. Let's go. All right. Here we go. Let's get this started. Go ahead and set your Instant Pot to saute. Next, we are gonna go ahead and add our olive oil, and I'm just going to heat it up enough so it starts to shimmer a little bit because we're gonna brown off this beef in just a moment. So I just have my half a teaspoon of salt and pepper here, and I'm gonna shake it over the top, and then I'm just going to mix it all up to kind of get it all over the places, and then we're gonna get it right into the pot. I'm just using my hands. Okay, once it's all salt and peppered and that's hot, we're gonna get it in and we're gonna brown it for a couple minutes. Yeah. And while that's browning, if you haven't done all your mise en place like I have, go ahead and do them now. This is not browning very well. I. There is a lot of liquid in my pot. Um, so I think I'm going to, um, dump out a little bit of my liquid and then see if I can get them to actually sear cause they're not sear, they're turning brown, but they're not getting that seared, which is what we're looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump a little bit of this liquid and see if I can get a better sear on it. See, and now I just have barely any liquid in there. So maybe it will help them stick to the bottom a little better um, because that seemed like a lot of liquid. And I don't, I want them to stick because when we put the beer in, we want to deglaze the pan. So I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with the recipe. In fact, this recipe comes from familyfreshmeals.com. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with the recipe. I just think that it's supposed to be sticking to the bottom and my meat just has a, it's a my meat is juicy. <laughs> you see, there's now, more in there. Okay, it's fine. We're just gonna, we'll, we'll go with it. Whatever. It's fine. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and take it out because I don't want it to completely overcook and I don't really have much browned bits on there, but at least they're browned. But as I started to say, I don't think I finished my thought. Um, if you're browning the meat and there doesn't, it doesn't stick to the bottom and get any of the like caramely delicious like bits, there's not really a reason to be browning the meat. Does that make sense? Okay, so now we're gonna add our onions to the pot and we are going to caramelize these guys. Um, it may take about five minutes for you to get some color on them. Um, you definitely want them to start to turn brown before we're done. All 
All right, these onions are starting to take on a little bit of that brown color, which is the perfect time to go ahead and add your garlic. And we're gonna cook that for 30 seconds to a minute. Careful not to burn our garlic. All right, and there is some nice fond on the bottom of that. They see that? That's the fond, and this is where our beer is gonna come in handy. We are gonna go ahead and pour our beer in then there to deglaze the can. Now, I'm ruining this stew. I know, I promise, it's not ruined. It's probably fine. Okay, here we go. The whole thing is going in. Things I do. All right, and now we're just going to cook this for a couple minutes, scraping the bottom to deglaze the pan. Actually, mixed with the onions, it's not so bad. It still has that hoppy smell to it. It doesn't smell like I wanna run for the shire. All right, looking good. Okay, now we're gonna let that cook for about two or three minutes. We don't even have to touch it or anything. All right, and after two or three minutes, you are going to add your tomato paste. And I'm adding my tomato paste first so I can give it a good stir. All right, once you think that's mostly broken up, we're gonna add our celery, our broth, our Worcestershire. We're gonna give that a good stir again. And then we're gonna add in our meat and all the juices. I am going to take my lid Make sure that it's on ceiling, and we are gonna set the pressure for 30 minutes on high. Before you start your Instant Pot, make sure your herbs are in it. I was just cleaning up and putting the stuff in the dishwasher and saw that I forgot to put the thyme and the bay leaves in, so put that in. Now start your Instant Pot for 30 minutes. All right, and after 30 minutes, we're gonna quick release this and then get our potatoes and carrots in. So I'll be back in 30. Okay, the time is up. Let's quick release so we can get this other stuff in. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is find the thyme and the bay leaves. We're gonna take those out. All right, once your thyme and bay leaves are out, we're gonna get in all of our potatoes. And all of our carrots. I'm gonna give it a little mix and then I'm gonna get my lid right back on. Make sure it's on seal. Okay, now we're gonna set it for four minutes. At the end of four minutes, we are gonna quick release again and then we are going to thicken it with some cornstarch. Okay, the timer just went off, so let's go ahead and vent this. While that's venting, mix together your cornstarch and your water. This is totally optional though. You don't have to thicken it, but you want to thicken it. Okay, pressure's down, let's get this open. Ooh. Okay, we're gonna pour the cornstarch slurry right into the pot. And we're just going to stir it up. And as it sits here and cools a little bit, it's gonna thicken on its own. And while that's thickening, I'm gonna go ahead and de-stem some of this fresh thyme. I'm just gonna push it through my uh, zester here. You ever seen that trick before? <laughs> All right, time for us to dig in here and see what we got. Now, on initial smell, I do not smell Guinness. So, uh, it's looking very positive for me. <laughs> so let's see here. Ooh, look at how beautiful. Wow. Look at that. All right, and then we're going to garnish with a little bit of fresh thyme. 
And there we have it, our Irish stew. All right, so let's try the broth first. Uh, well, I think you definitely need salt. So um, I noticed in that recipe, in fact, several of the recipes, one of them was just salt to taste. Um, definitely salt it at the table or even before it goes to the table. So taste your pot, then add some salt in there. A healthy pinch of salt, because that broth definitely needed some salt. So let's give that a little stir and let's try the broth again. Oh yeah, it definitely needed that salt. I also feel like it's lacking a little something, um, but let's see, let's, let's taste the meat. I'm a little worried about the meat being that it went through the Instant Pot, but let's try it. Ooh, that is not dry at all. Again, I feel like it's lacking a little bit of something. Maybe a little more Worcestershire sauce would go a long ways um, in it. So like add it at the table just a tiny bit. And it still does need a little more salt because <laughs> half of a teaspoon of salt in this whole pot feels like that's not enough. So definitely salt your broth. All right. Let's take carrot and potato and piece of meat. Hmm. Okay. I can't take the Guinness in it. <laughs> maybe that means I'm Irish after all, or the hope maybe that means I'm not Irish because I can't taste the Guinness. But because I can't taste the Guinness, I'm not like, oh, this is disgusting, um, like in those other videos. Um, it does taste a lot just like stew. I'm not super like excited about this, but it has a good flavor. I feel like the potatoes could use a little bit more flavor, um, but after adding more salt in, I feel like they're definitely, like it's a good stew. Would I make it again? I don't know if I would, or maybe I will, but I would like add some other things, like some more acidity maybe. Um, the two tablespoons, two and a half tablespoons of tomato paste that we put into it, it doesn't feel like that was enough. Maybe a whole can of tomato paste um, and maybe cook out that tomato paste just a little bit more. Um, but all in all, I think this is a successful soup. If you like a hearty soup with lots of carrots and potatoes and meat that is actually surprisingly tender and not tough at all, use your Instant Pot. Make some Irish stew. Mm. I could drink that broth with a straw now that it's salted. Well, you guys, I think that means that I can keep my Irish card for another year. Now, the month of March is a long one, so if you have any Irish recipes you wanna see me try, leave me a comment. Otherwise, you guys, I'm gonna get this served up and it's time for dinner. We'll see you on the next adventure. Bye.